and start to say, look, this is a useful bit of land. We could do something different with it. We can think differently about what we do with it. It's intergenerational. You've got old people who know about what type of food grows in our community. And this is, in the background, a photograph of the allotments in the 1920s in the town that I live in. At that time, there were, le there were nearly 500 allotments. Those are la pieces of land about as big as this room that were used in the park, the public park. <coughs> the public park then got taken over by the local authority and was made into grassland. And we've now only got 14 allotments in the town. One four, instead of 400. So what we're saying to the park managers are, give us some more of that park back, because there's enough people in this town now that want to grow this stuff and actually build it into their enterprise, make community interest companies that grow food as micro-businesses. We've had a number of new builds, one of which is the health centre. And um, that's not very clear, but... Um, we had a long conversation with the National Health Service. And the National Health Service said, yeah, you can plant things in, your, in our in our land, but you have to give us the Latin names. So they didn't just want us to put cherry in, we had to put in cherry that was given the Latin name, I don't know what it is, but all of these here are the Latin names for the basic things we wanted to grow. Those sorts of s rather stupid impediments, things that stop doing things, are things we're trying to get out, the, get, move out the way. So we've been talking to the National Health Service and saying, look, You've got loads of land all over the country. Wouldn't it be interesting to think of the National Health Service as a well-being service? And to think of the National Health Service as a place where you could go and get interesting food, nourishing food, within your environment, and use the land all around the hospital se sector, and there's lots of it, as the National Health Food Forest. <laughs> and they said, yes, we'll do that. So we're just beginning a national health food forest project where every single bit of national health land in the country suddenly becomes community food resource. And you begin to see how this thing shifts. All of a sudden, institutions that are national start to take it on board and use it. We've got a large number of schools now very, very interested in the idea of forest gardens. Those are, those are planted food environments that children can learn outside about edible, edible plants and use them to then come back into the school site and, and cook and, and talk about the different types of plants and talk about the different ways in which they would perhaps take it to the next stage, what sort of density of planting, what type of management needs to go on. You start to get that shift of consciousness into this that's very simple to take on board. I'm going to jump forward. Uh, bees. Bees are interesting. This is another connector. We've got 60% of our community last year 60% of our bees in our, in our valley died because we had a terrible winter. And um, a lot of people around and about are interested in keeping bees, but they don't know how to do it because it's a knowledge that goes... From, you get taught how to do it by somebody who's already done it. So five years ago, I started to keep bees, and I was quite interested in the idea of a community beekeeping group. And I put an advert on our website... And we had 70 people say, yes, we'd like to learn. More than we could actually deal with. So we've got two groups. We've got the first group of 35 training at the moment on four different bee sites around the, around the town. And once they've trained and done two years of beekeeping, because you have to sort of get used to them a bit, um, then they will become trainers. And they'll pass on that noise to other people. They're looking at going to schools, offering it in, in, as a service in town, as a learning service. You see the way in which education becomes something that's in, embedded into the thinking of the community, rather than just boxed into the school environment. But bees are very useful, obviously, for, for, the, for the other reasons, but they will probably, with, with, within, uh, within a four- or five-year period, provide somebody with a job, because there's going to be enough product arising from beekeeping in our town to actually produce honey, wax, and all the associated products from that soaps that you can make and things so somebody can actually have a full-time job just working with us on that as part of the part of the community enterprise that's um that's one of the food planters on the on the high street um, swiss chard and various herbs and 
some cabbages and some potatoes and things. Um, we're hitting a, a very broad demographic in the project. We've got Mapuri Punjabi community, Bengalis, um, a lot of people from Pakistan that live in, the, in, in our town, a lot of Polish people who are amazingly good growers, um, those big, big ladies from Poland that are just fantastic sources of knowledge about growing. And you go, we go to them and ask them to run little projects for us now on the, th on the things they have grown in their own hometowns and have used in, in boxes and tyres and buckets in their backyards for many years. And actually opening up the possibility for to give people land again, these, these ladies are just loving it because they're able to then demonstrate this amazing skill they've got that nobody in the neighbourhood knew they had up until the day when they started doing it and had this enormous <laughs> yield of growth. So this is on the, the old school tennis courts 